This is the Private Lender Podcast, the show that shares practical advice and know-how for new and seasoned lenders, from private mortgages on single-family houses to joint ventures on commercial projects and beyond. Discover details about investment vehicles that you won't find at your local bank or online broker. Listen and learn from private lenders and real estate investors, as well as from professionals and entrepreneurs, as they share the details, strategies, and the insight that allows for successful and prosperous lending. Now, get ready to increase your ROI. Here's your host, Keith Baker. Welcome and thank you for listening to the Private Lender Podcast. I am your host, Keith Baker, and I'd like to take a few moments on this episode zero just to give you an idea of what this episode's about, my background, why I like private lending so much, and what you can expect to get out of listening to this podcast. My background, quite simple, Texas boy, Houston area, born and raised. Dad was real handy around the house. I learned how to do a lot of things, uh, uh, fixing things, being very handy, that wound up uh, working construction through college and I did a lot of painting a lot of make readies for landlords in the college town that I was in also did some work for flips and um, while I was in while I was in school so I, I saw a lot from the construction side of things and then when I got out of school I worked for a, a while as a construction manager for MHI McGuire Home Builders here in Houston however as the housing market began to dip I jumped over to the oil field was fortunate enough I was fortunate enough to get a job in the oil field as a measurement while drilling specialist which was a great job except I was never home good money great benefits never saw my wife and once we started a family it was time to come home I became an insurance adjuster for the oil field which has been quite an interesting job due to the fact that I handle so much of other people's money but as far as real estate and investing goes, I'm comfortable to say to you, or to admit, I should say, that I sat on the sidelines for years, never doing a deal, learning as much as I could. And then once I did uh, start getting out there and making deals, taking them down, I learned that I'm a horrible landlord and it's not my cup of tea. So uh, that gives you a little background on on my investing. But I, for the last several years, I've been doing primarily just private lending. It keeps me in touch with the people that are doing the deals everyone all all real estate investors need money so it's a great position to be in and it keeps me around an industry that I, I really like and I really enjoy and for the last decade I've been a member of one of the oldest nonprofit real estate investing associations in the US the Realty Investment Club of Houston or Rich Club and for the last two years I had the honor of serving on the board of directors as well however since I decided to start this podcast and ramp up my investing. I've stepped down from the board, but I still remain friends with the the board of directors and a lot of people there at Rich, and I wish them all the very best and thank them for the education that they've given me to allow me to get to this point so I can do a a podcast on, on private lending. So the question, why private lending? And I've noticed there seems to be almost a theme amongst real estate investors where they'll start off as a flipper or perhaps a landlord and they'll do a lot of deals, and ultimately, they get very seasoned. That's a polite way of saying old. And they get a little tired of the of the hustle and the grind. So they still take the same set of skills, the analytical skills they used while they were actively investing, and they become private lenders for other investors, and also guiders, or, or, and they can also provide some guidance along the way. Myself, I have a day job that I still enjoy. I'm not quite ready to fire my boss, full disclosure. I still I still work the 9 to 5, but I do all the investing in this podcast nights and weekends. And I go I, I still look at all the houses that I, I loan on when possible. There a couple of times I haven't, which I've been lucky, but I always try to make it a point to go look at the houses before I, I agree to loan the funds. My investing is done through a self-directed IRA. We're fortunate enough to have a very good IRA, self-directed IRA custodian here in Houston. I have a few accounts. My wife and I have a few accounts with them, and that's how I do my investing. And what I did was after I came out of the oil field, I took the old 401k that I had that I'd done quite well in. I rolled those funds over into a self-directed IRA and began networking with people who could show me how to be a successful lender, the hazards and the pitfalls, as well as what constitutes a home run. I've been fortunate and not had to suffer due to these mistakes. I've loaned to people who had too little experience and I came out okay, fortunately. 
I have taken second liens on properties that really didn't have the value to support the valuation or the money that I was giving. And I've made various other mistakes along the way. And I plan and hope to share all of those with you so that you don't make those mistakes in the future as you, as you lend. As to why I've created this podcast, I wanted to help those who wish to be involved in real estate, but perhaps don't have the ability to fully immerse themselves. So this, this show is geared to people who want to be a little more passive. You know, the guy with or the gal with the nine to five job who's got that old 401k from a job, an old job that they can self-direct. Or maybe they have cash. Maybe they have an inheritance. So why private lending? I think there are people out there that have a lot in common with my situation. I have a day job that I actually do enjoy. At least I can tolerate it even on the bad days. And I look forward to going to it most of the days of the week. So I think it's a positive thing for me. But I travel quite frequently, which limits the amount of time I have to devote to active investing and being out on site with at the properties. And I've noticed as as I talk to other active investors that almost every one of them mentioned how they're looking for for private lenders because they can come in and and feel a a very uh, feel a need for speedy closings and reasonable interest rates. So that's why I've created this podcast revolving around private lending is to help those be involved in real estate investing, but they don't have that ability to fully immerse themselves into it full time or devote the time it needs to, to do a project and to do it well. Since I've become a private lender, I have met and cultivated relationships with investors who became partners in deals. And some of my borrowers became business partners in other ventures. And that continues to this day. This is in addition to the relationships that were forged with the vendors and entrepreneurs that helped me form my team of professionals and that I'm constantly meeting and, and cultivating uh, to keep that team, as, that dream team, so to speak, together to help me out. So those are appraisers, inspectors, title agents, real estate agents, et cetera, et cetera. So what can you expect from the Private Lender Podcast? Well, first I want to say or talk about who the Private Lender Podcast is not designed for. So if you want to get rich quick and sip drinks from the beach, then this podcast probably isn't for you. If that's something you're interested in, then you can just stay up late one night and order the first training package that you see advertised. Uh, And don't be ashamed to do it. We've all been there and bought at least one of those courses from the late night TV gurus. If you are a set it and forget it investor, and that should not be taken as an insult, but if you're a truly passive investor, um, then private lending is probably going to have a little bit more effort or require a little more effort than you're looking for, especially in the beginning as you learn the process. But this is a great thing because you learn more about your market that, you're, that you live in or that you're investing in, which will help you hone your lending criteria and will also make you a, a better investor. And if you go into private lending with the idea of taking back properties, foreclosing on them and disposing of them yourselves, yourself for larger profits, While this may sound like a great way to find deals and leads, it's also predatory, and you could be heavily fined or even serve time, uh, in addition to being illegal, immoral, and unethical. I would not not to say that you don't take properties back, but if that is your design and the idea that you have going into it, uh, then please don't listen to this podcast. I'd hate to think that somebody learned how to swindle somebody by listening to my podcast and then taking advantage of somebody. We talk about criteria, and that criteria is there for a reason, to protect not only the lender, but the borrower as well. Because a private lending opportunity should be always should always be win-win for everybody. Things do happen from time to time. It's just a fact of life. But if you're going into this with dishonesty in your heart, then I'd rather you not listen. So, having said that, who is the Private Lender Podcast designed to reach? Well, if you want to learn about legal, moral, ethical, IRS-approved, and asset-backed investments that blows, blow the doors off of safe bank investments like CDs or money market accounts or savings accounts, then you want to keep listening. If you want to diversify your investments off of Wall Street and closer to Main Street where you live, your loans would go to help local neighborhoods uh, as dilapidated houses become upgraded and modernized and made available for new families to call home. If you're worried about the recent run-up in the stock market and looking for an asset-based investment to help strengthen your portfolio, then please keep listening. This may provide you with some viable alternatives. If you want to become involved in real estate but aren't certain if an active role is going to suit your lifestyle or your, your needs, 
then this may be for you as well. Private lending will put you in proximity of the people taking down deals every day, and that is a powerful place to be. And if you're just curious, then please, by all means, keep listening. Because my hope and the mission of the Private Lender Podcast is to give you the understanding you need to make good lending decisions that are a win-win situation for everyone. To that end, each week I intend to publish at least one episode. I hope that it will be an interview released every Monday, and then perhaps Thursday or Friday I'll have a, a small, short episode of just me maybe talking about a tip or a lesson learned. So hopefully two two episodes a week, but definitely at least one, and I hope to make that one an interview. Uh, I've got a slew of people coming up. I think everyone's going to enjoy it. It's going to be very good information um, for lenders and investors alike. And I'd also like to say that the private mortgages and private lending is just the beginning. I have a much larger vision involving alternative investments. So I hope to see you here on future episodes of the Private Lender Podcast. This is your host, Keith Baker, saying goodbye and happy lending. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Private Lender Podcast with your host, Keith Baker. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit privatelenderpodcast.com. If you enjoyed today's episode, please rate and review, and we'll catch you next time.